Thank goodness you saved the cake! Oh. Oh. <laughs> In the annals of television history, the Brady Bunch stands as a beacon of Americana. Which side do you think is my best side? I don't think it makes any difference. <laughs> Symbolizing a transitional era when the dynamics of family were beginning to change. Pronounce you man and wife. They whom God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. Premiering in September 1969, this sitcom centered around a blended family navigating the challenges and joys of life together, resonating with audiences then and now. Okay, you ready? <laughs> While not initially a hit during its original airings, its charm and evergreen storylines about love, understanding, and unity have ensured its legacy. This video delves into the world of the Bradys, exploring their impact on society, the controversies behind the scenes, and their lasting imprint on the television landscape. The Genesis of the Brady Bunch As the 1960s progressed, America began witnessing a demographic shift in the structure of its families. Divorces were becoming more common, and with them came the rise of blended families. Television, a medium that often mirrors society, had yet to fully embrace this change. That gap in representation set the stage for the creation of The Brady Bunch. Sherwood Schwartz, the creative mind behind The Brady Bunch, was not initially inspired to delve into the world of television by a personal encounter or a mere imaginative concept. Instead, it was a newspaper article that ignited the flame. The Los Angeles Times had run a story on the noticeable surge in marriages involving partners with children from previous relationships. Schwartz, always having an eye for stories that resonate with the masses, recognized the potential in this trend. He envisioned a show that not only captured the essence of these new family structures, but also celebrated the love and unity that held them together. However, bringing such a vision to life was not without its challenges. After the show's inception, Schwartz found himself embroiled in a lawsuit. He was accused of plagiarizing the concept of the Brady Bunch from the 1968 film Yours, Mine, and Ours. This film, which starred Lucille Ball and Henry Fonda, also revolved around a large, blended family navigating the hurdles of their combined lives. The similarities between the two were undeniable, and the controversy threatened to overshadow the show even before it hit the airwaves. Schwartz vehemently defended the originality of The Brady Bunch, asserting that while both the film and his show explored similar family dynamics, the core inspirations and narrative arcs were distinct. In Schwartz's favor was an array of notes and outlines, which he had meticulously maintained throughout the development process. These documents served as concrete evidence that the idea for the sitcom was conceived independently of the film. The lawsuit's resolution paved the way for The Brady Bunch to become a beloved part of the American television tapestry. The show's portrayal of a family trying to mesh their lives harmoniously, despite coming from different backgrounds, resonated with countless viewers. It showcased that love, understanding, and patience could indeed create a seamless and loving family unit, irrespective of its origins. What set The Brady Bunch apart even more was its willingness to address even if subtly, the societal shifts of the era. At a time when many television shows opted for traditional nuclear family portrayals, Schwartz dared to present an alternative, one that reflected the evolving dynamics of many American homes. In retrospect, the lawsuit and the surrounding controversies only added to the show's allure. It positioned the Brady Bunch not just as a mere entertainment product, but as a work that dared to tread new grounds, challenge the status quo, and in the process, redefine the very concept of family on television. As the Bradys laughed, loved, and lived, they became a testament to Schwartz's vision, a vision born from a simple news article but destined to leave an indelible mark on pop culture. Character profiles, the Brady family. Central to the appeal of the Brady Bunch, was its diverse cast of characters. Each member brought a unique flair to the show, representing a different facet of the 1970s American family and contributing to the narrative's richness. Mike Brady was the calm and steady patriarch. An architect by profession, Mike was characterized by his wisdom, patience, and, most importantly, his undying commitment to his family. He often played the role of mediator, 
guiding his children through the ups and downs of growing up in a blended household. And maintaining the balance in his new marriage to Carol. Carol Brady, with her warm presence and iconic blonde locks, stood as the emotional center of the family. A widow when she met Mike, Carol brought with her three daughters and a history laden with its own tales and tribulations. As the series unfolded, Carol showcased resilience, love, and a remarkable ability to bridge the divide between her daughters and Mike's sons, reminding viewers of the unifying power of motherhood. Mike's three sons, Greg, Peter, and Bobby, each bore unique traits that made them endearing. Greg, the eldest, often grappled with the trials of adolescence, paving the way for his younger siblings. Peter, the middle son, epitomized the struggles that come with being neither the eldest nor the youngest. <laughs> While Bobby, the youngest, portrayed the innocence and mischief typical of his age. You're dead right away. Carol's daughters, Marsha, Jan, and Cindy, completed the Brady Children Ensemble. Marsha, the eldest, faced her own teenage dilemmas, from boys to school challenges. Jan, perpetually in the shadow of her elder sister, delivered some of the most memorable lines of the series as she strived to carve her own identity. Oh, it doesn't really matter. I've given George up. To me, he doesn't even exist anymore. <laughs> Little Cindy, with her lisp and golden curls, brought an angelic charm that warmed the hearts of viewers. Adding a touch of humor and unyielding support was Alice Nelson, the Brady's housekeeper. This is Brady! <laughs> oh. Oh. More than just an employee, Alice was an integral part of the family. Her wisecracks, enduring relationship with the local butcher, Sam, and undying loyalty to the Brady's, often served as the glue holding the family together during challenging times. And no family portrait is complete without pets. Tiger, the Brady's dog, and Fluffy, Carol's cat, were not just pets. They were family members in their own right. These animals added another layer to the series, highlighting the everyday joys and challenges of pet ownership in a bustling household. Central to the Brady's lives was the home they resided in, a sprawling suburban house designed by none other than Mike Brady himself. The iconic split-level residence, with its open staircase and wood paneling, became as symbolic as the characters themselves. This home wasn't just a set, it was a tangible representation of the family's blended nature. Every room, every nook and cranny told stories of compromise, adjustment, and eventual acceptance. The house also mirrored the times, reflecting 1970s aesthetics and the era's sense of hope and change. The characters of The Brady Bunch went beyond mere fictional entities. They became relatable figures, reflecting the challenges and joys of a changing American society. From the parents to the children, housekeeper, and even pets, each character played a pivotal role in showcasing the beautiful chaos that defines blended families. Together, amidst the backdrop of their iconic home, they celebrated the idea that love, above all, builds a family. Behind the Scenes, Casting Choices and Challenges The Brady Bunch wasn't merely a family sitcom, it was a cultural phenomenon, a status it couldn't have achieved without the charismatic cast that brought its characters to life. However, assembling this ensemble wasn't a straightforward affair. Behind the scenes, the casting process was an intricate ballet of choices, challenges, and revelations. Given the show's promising concept, the audition for the Brady family witnessed an overwhelming turnout. Potential Bradys filled the casting rooms, each hoping to become part of TV's next big sensation. Which side do you think is my best side? I don't think it makes any difference. <laughs> Sherwood Schwartz, the brain behind the show, believed in a hands-on approach. Rather than standard auditions, Schwartz utilized a unique method. He had child actors interact in pairs or groups, mimicking real family dynamics to gauge chemistry. It was an innovative technique for the time, ensuring that the chosen ensemble would radiate authentic familial bonds on screen. Amid the sea of faces hoping to become a part of the Brady legacy, some now famous names floated to the surface, making for interesting what-if scenarios. Gene Hackman, not yet the celebrated star of The French Connection and The Conversation, 
had been considered for the role of Mike Brady. His more intense screen presence could have drastically shifted the dynamics of the Brady household. Jodie Foster, in her budding years, auditioned for one of the Brady girls, while Jeffrey Hunter also eyed the role of Mike. Perhaps the most surprising of all was Shirley Jones. Before going on to become the matriarch of the Partridge family, Jones was initially offered the part of Carol Brady. She declined, opting instead for a singing role, paving the way for Florence Henderson's iconic portrayal. The creation of The Brady Bunch is a testament to the intricate tapestry of choices that underpin a successful show. From Schwartz's unique casting techniques to the decision to alter actors' appearances, every choice was measured against the vision of presenting a united, believable, blended family to the world. The stories from behind the scenes, peppered with names of actors who might have been Brady's, add layers of depth to the show's legacy. They remind us that while the on-screen antics of the Brady's were filled with laughter and lessons off-screen, a diligent team was consistently making choices, big and small, to ensure that the Brady magic remained undiminished secrets and scandals. The Brady Bunch, on the surface, was the epitome of the wholesome American family sitcom. Yet, as with many such shows, there were secrets and stories hidden behind the smiling faces and well-timed laughs. These secrets, some benign and others more severe, provide a more profound look into the pressures of being in the limelight and the human stories that television so often masks. One of the most talked-about secrets during and after the show's run was Barry Williams's, who played the eldest Brady son, Greg, infatuation with his on-screen mother, Florence Henderson, Carol Brady. It was a teenage crush magnified by the constraints of a TV set. This infatuation culminated in a date, a drive, and dinner, which Williams detailed in his autobiography, Growing Up Brady. Perhaps the most poignant chapter in Growing Up Brady is called Dating Your Mom. Barry details his infatuation with on-screen mom, Florence Henderson. While both parties later laughed it off as a one-time innocent affair, the story became one of the most emblematic tales from behind the scenes, showcasing the blurred lines between real and real life. Then there was Maureen McCormick, who portrayed the eldest Brady daughter, Marcia. Outside the confines of the Brady household, McCormick navigated the rocky terrains of her teenage years with its highs and lows. Her relationship with Barry Williams was an open secret. Their off-screen romance was brief, but it was just one chapter in more Maureen's tumultuous adolescence. She grappled with substance abuse, a secret she managed to keep away from the limelight during her time on the show. Later in her memoir, Here's the Story, she opened up about her battles with drugs, an unexpected pregnancy, and an abortion. McCormick also admitted to a short-lived shoplifting phase, adding yet another layer to the complexities of her life during and after the Brady Bunch. Her revelations shed light on the pressures and pitfalls of young stardom, a stark contrast to the pristine Brady Brady world. Robert Reed, who portrayed the affable Mike Brady too, had his own set of secrets and standout moments. One of the most memorable off-screen incidents occurred during the shooting of a roller coaster episode. Despite a fear of heights, Reed set aside his phobia to accompany a terrified Susan Olsen, Cindy on the ride, becoming her real-life hero. However, it wasn't just his bravery on set that defined Reed. Throughout his time on The Brady Bunch, he kept a significant aspect of his life hidden from the public, his sexuality. Being gay in an era that was far less accepting was no small burden. It wasn't until after his death in 1992 that his sexuality became more widely known, shedding light on the personal battles he faced while portraying the patriarch of America's favorite family. The tales from behind the scenes of The Brady Bunch offer a more nuanced perspective on the show and its cast. They remind us that beneath the laughter and family bonding on screen, real people were navigating the complexities of life, love, and identity. While the Brady Brady's will always be remembered for their picture-perfect moments. It's these off-screen tales that make them truly relatable, reminding audiences of the intricate tapestry of human experiences that every person, even TV icons, go through. Societal taboos and primetime television. When viewers tuned into The Brady Bunch, they were welcomed into the heartwarming world of a blended family, navigating the ups and downs of life with laughter, love, and valuable life lessons. However, despite its progressive portrayal of a merged family, the show was still a product of its time. 
adhering to some societal norms, and avoiding certain taboos that may seem odd or even trivial to modern viewers. Two of the most notable among these were the inexplicable absence of Carol Brady's divorce backstory and the mysterious non-appearance of toilets in the Brady household. An even quirkier avoidance, and one that often raised eyebrows, was the absence of toilets in the Brady household. This might seem like a minor detail, but in the broader landscape of television during that era, it was significant. Bathrooms, especially especially toilets, were surprisingly taboo on American television in the 1960s. The networks operated under the belief that showing or even hinting at such mundane details would be too crass or indelicate for audiences. It was deemed inappropriate to remind viewers of such intimate aspects of daily life. The toilets themselves were conspicuously absent. This decision wasn't unique to the Brady Bunch. It was an industry-wide norm, a nod to the peculiar sensitivities of the time. These decisions, when viewed from the modern-day vantage point, might seem peculiar or overly cautious. However, they provide a fascinating lens into the era's mores and the balancing act television creators had to maintain. They had to walk a fine line, pushing the boundaries just enough to stay relevant and fresh, but not too much to risk alienating advertisers or drawing the ire of network executives. The Brady Bunch, despite its progressive premise, was not exempt from these pressures. The show's decisions to sidestep certain subjects is emblematic of the times. While it reflected the changing American family structure, it also paid heed to the prevailing societal taboos. As with all television, it offers not just entertainment but also a mirror to the norms, values, and quirks of the society in which it was created. Turbulence in paradise. Conflicts behind the camera. The Brady Bunch remains etched in television history as an idyllic portrayal of family life filled with wholesome moments, laughter, and togetherness. But behind the camera, the atmosphere wasn't always as harmonious as what was shown on screen. The most notable of these off-screen conflicts revolved around Robert Reed, the talented actor who portrayed the loving patriarch Mike Brady. Robert Reed was a classically trained actor, with credentials that spanned Shakespearean theater and a deep passion for the dramatic arts. When he signed on to The Brady Bunch, Reed expected a show with substance, one that would deal meaningfully with the challenges and realities of a blended family in America. As the series progressed, however, he found himself increasingly at odds with the direction the show was taking. To Reed, many of the plot lines felt trivial and the comedic scenarios far-fetched. He believed that the show, given its premise, had the potential to explore deeper issues and offer more than just light-hearted entertainment. His commitment to realism and depth frequently put him at odds with Sherwood Schwartz, the show's creator and the writers who often leaned into the comedic, sometimes zany, aspects of family life. Reed's dissatisfaction wasn't confined to just private conversations or script meetings. He often voiced his disagreements on set, leading to tension and delays. His detailed script notes, often outlining what he believed were inconsistencies or superficialities, became infamous. On more than one occasion, these disagreements escalated to the point where Reed's continued participation in the series seemed uncertain. This discord came to a head during the filming of the show's last episode. Reed was vocally unhappy with the script, which revolved around a comedic subplot of Greg's hair turning orange from a hair tonic just days before his graduation. Deeming it unrealistic and farcical, Reed's protests were so vehement that he was ultimately written out of the episode. For many fans, the absence of Mike Brady in such a crucial episode was jarring, marking a noticeable void in the family dynamics they had come to love. In many ways, Robert Reed's relationship with the Brady Bunch was complex and multifaceted. While he struggled with the direction the show took, his commitment to his colleagues and his love for his on-screen family remained unwavering. His passion for authenticity and depth while at times a point of contention, was also a testament to his dedication to his craft and his belief in the potential of the show. Even in turbulence, Reed's legacy as Mike Brady, and more importantly as a mentor and father figure to the young cast, remains an indelible part of the Brady Bunch lore. Brady Bunch Legacy The Brady Bunch might have debuted in the late 1960s, but its cultural significance and influence have only grown over the decades. As the curtains closed on the final episode, it was clear that the legacy of the Bradys was only beginning. With its portrayal of the quintessential all-American family, the show addressed the ever-changing dynamics of family units, offering viewers both solace and entertainment in its familiar episodes. For many, the Brady Bunch 
was more than just a weekly TV indulgence. It represented a specific ideal of family life. Even with its blended family setup, a relatively new concept to mainstream America back then, the show echoed the universal themes of love, trust, and understanding. It gave a generation of viewers a reassuring window into a world where the trials and tribulations of life could always be solved with a group hug and a heart-to-heart -heart in the family living room. This optimistic portrayal resonated deeply, offering comfort during times of societal change and uncertainty. But what of the actors who brought the Brady family to life? After all, they weren't immune to the changing winds of the entertainment industry, personal challenges, or the weight of such iconic roles. Florence Henderson, Carol, enjoyed a career that spanned various mediums, from theater to television. Often fondly dubbed America's Mom, her innate warmth and talent ensured that she remained a beloved figure long after the show. Henderson's work included hosting her talk shows, participating in reality television, and even a stint on Dancing with the Stars. Throughout, she always spoke warmly of her Brady days. Crediting the show with giving her a platform to reach and inspire countless fans. Barry Williams, Greg, and Maureen McCormick, Marsha, the elder Brady siblings, both faced challenges tied to their teen idol statuses. Navigating the transition from child stars to adult actors wasn't easy, with typecasting and personal issues often posing hurdles. However, they both found their paths, with Barry branching into musical theater and Maureen penning a memoir, here's the story, providing an unvarnished look into her life, both during and after her Brady days. Eve Plum, Jan, perhaps most starkly defied her Brady image. She dabbled in more serious roles, even starring in a challenging teen prostitution-themed TV movie. Alongside her acting, Plum discovered a passion for painting, with her artwork garnering significant attention. The show's legacy, however, goes beyond its episodes or the trajectories of its actors. The very essence of The Brady Bunch, its unwavering faith in the power of family, understanding, and love, became a touchstone for viewers. The actors, with their post-Brady endeavors, showcased the multifaceted nature of fame, the challenges and opportunities that come with iconic roles, and the inherent humanity that binds us all. In reflecting on the show, many of the actors have noted its timeless appeal, the familial bond they shared, and the sheer joy of being part of something bigger than themselves. Through highs and lows, triumphs and trials, the legacy of The Brady Bunch remains as vibrant as ever, a testament to the show's heart, soul, and the family that captured the imagination of a nation. Iconic scene that ended The Brady Bunch. As the end credits rolled on the harebrained scheme, the final episode of The Brady Bunch, an era of television came to an emotional close. The scene which capped off the series wasn't filled with tearful goodbyes or dramatic revelations, but instead showcased the series' trademark blend of humor, heart, and the daily adventures of the Brady household. The episode finds Bobby, the youngest Brady son, profiting from selling hair tonic, a venture that soon goes awry when Greg, the eldest, decides to try it before his high school graduation, resulting in his hair turning bright orange. The situational comedy that ensues, with the family rallying around Greg in his moment of distress, epitomizes the lighthearted nature of the show. But beneath the laughs lay a deeper significance. The resolution of Greg's hair predicament sees the family, as always, coming together, working to find a solution. They pool their creative resources, led by Mike and Carol, to ensure that Greg's graduation isn't ruined by his unfortunate hair mishap. As the family gathers in the living room, a space that had been the backdrop for many a Brady gathering over the years, there's an unspoken acknowledgement that this is their last shared screen moment. And so it wasn't the hair tonic or the ensuing comedy that took center stage, but rather the enduring bond of the Brady family. The finality of this scene was subtle. There were no overt references to the end of their televised journey, but fans could sense the culmination of five seasons worth of shared experiences, lessons learned, and memories made. The emphasis on Greg's impending graduation was particularly poignant, symbolic of a coming of age not just for Greg, but for the entire family. 
For fans, the ending left a lasting impression. Though the narrative arc of the final episode was wrapped up neatly, with Greg's graduation proceeding without a hitch and the family sharing a celebratory moment, the emotional resonance lingered. The scene was a gentle yet potent reminder of the impermanence of moments, the evolution of family dynamics, and the preciousness of shared memories. To some, the decision to end on such an ordinary note might have seemed anticlimactic, Yet for a show that had consistently highlighted the beauty of simplicity and the strength of family ties, it was the perfect conclusion. The scene wasn't about the end of The Brady Bunch, it was a celebration of everything the show stood for. In the years that followed, as reruns played on TV screens and a new generation of viewers discovered the Brady family's charm, the final scene's significance only grew. It wasn't just an ending, it was an invitation to revisit, remember, and cherish the countless moments the Bradys shared. An iconic scene indeed, not for its dramatic flair, but for its authenticity, heart, and the enduring message of family.